Joel Dubry and Ian Royce. Hello to you both. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, it's rumbling on. Donald Trump, uh, all his uh, campaign promises. We're now finding out a bit more about them, or perhaps not. Um, Michelle, you've picked out this story in the time about, Times about his border wall pledge. Yes. Um, so, obviously, he used quite a lot of strong statements, didn't he, Donald Trump, to get elected. So, talk of banning Muslims, building these massive walls. And now, you know, we're starting to see what you're actually going to do, how you're going to build such walls, what you're going to do. He obviously did his first television interview where he is starting to backtrack slightly, shall we say. So it's talk of a fence yesterday. Yes. Yeah, so it, it's exactly, yeah. So it's saying it's here, cheaper this, than a wall. Yeah. Exactly. But Next it's still be... construction. That's his point. Yeah. It's still construction. So, yes, this massive, impenetrable, beautiful wall that people were promised is likely to be a fence in some places. I mean, it already um, is. I mean, I've been down there on the border yeah. with Mexico, and, and there is a fence along a lot of it already. Right. You know what we're going to end up with, don't you? Box hedging. Hedges. Yeah. A nice box hedging. Private, a nice private fence. <laughs> is it just me, or is Donald Trump now a completely different person to who he was on, on the. Well, on the campaign, I watched that 60-minute interview and I was like, actually, I could, not that I was warming to him particularly, but it was a completely different person than I'd watched in the, in the lead-up to the... Do you think it's a bad thing, in your opinion? Um, I think it's a good thing. Um, but what worries me is, who were they actually voting for? Is, is, that's not the same person I was watching on 60 And that was, that was his main sort of campaign policy. Yeah. I'm going to build a wall. It's the only one that anyone could remember. Yeah. Well, well, the other email. one was um, lock her up, wasn't it? Yeah. So it's being far right. Yeah, a lot of yeah. people would describe um, Breitbart as like a far right uh, publication. So there's a lot of concern about why if they put him uh, in this top job, is that indicative of the fact that he's going to be quite far right in his policies? He's put um, a much more moderate um, former Republican as one of the other top jobs. So I think it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. A lot of people are calling on him to backtrack on that appointment of his chief strategist. I don't think he's going to. And I think it'll be interesting, to your point, I think he has to moderate himself mm. slightly. You can't wander around alienating absolutely everyone. And I think, to be fair to him, he's reached out and he has said, I want a lot of guidance, I yeah. want a lot of support. And I respect that side of him, because I think with a guy um, with an ego that big, mm. I think it would be quite difficult to say, actually, I want some help. Well, he's yeah. talking unity, isn't he? So he's obviously yeah. trying to appeal to both sides on, on certain email systems, but right. not all. The worst is the text message. You can't... No, yeah. you've got to do this. Believe <laughs> me, you don't get a text yeah. back. <laughs> We've all been there. So what's this story about? So there's a guy uh, in Croydon uh, who sent out an email to the GP uh, Information Management and Technology Facility uh, based in Croydon. So he sent this email out. But it's... Memo regarding Brexit from the government has sort of gathered pace, a lot of people giving their reaction. And this memo basically says that the government has no plan for Brexit yet. It needs at least another six months before it even has a list of priorities of what to tackle. But I think if we're, if we're going to leave and, and come out, that's massive, and there needs to be a proper, sustained plan of how we're going to do that. And if we haven't yet got time or we're not there, then it should be extended. I don't think, you know, this it has to happen in March, we need to do it now. I don't, I don't get or understand what the rush is. It's the biggest decision our country's made in, well, in my lifetime. But John McDonnell, the Shadow Chancellor, mm. when he was on earlier, Michelle, he said the government should have been prepared for this. They should have been prepared for the vote to go either way. It looks like they were prepared for a vote that said we would remain and now everything's up in the air because they, they just weren't prepared and it was their duty of care to the people of the UK. Yeah, so what I would say on this is I think that people have been slightly unfair by expecting this um, this done deal of a plan of what we're going to do. So I worked as a business transformation consultant for many, many, many years and when you're going to undertake a significant change, like you must not underestimate how significant a change Brexit is going to be, you have to get this right. So you have to spend a huge amount of time and this leak memo is confirming that indeed this was happening, huge amount of time actually starting right through the the whole organisation, for want of a better word. What does this look like? What do we need to do? What would be the implications? You need to do that step before you can then come up with a plan. And um, when people are saying, like, about the levers didn't have a plan, what do you mean the levers? The levers were not... They were a campaign group. They weren't the government that were in power. You know, Boris Johnson, it wasn't his job at that point in time, or Michael Gove's at that point in time, to come up with a plan of what we're going to do. Having said that, I do think that the government also was quite um, blasé. I don't believe that they thought that we would have got Brexit. Mm. I do believe that they kind of um, thought that people would have been a bit scared. And I also have said this many, many times, if the Remain camp had done things like talked about immigration and things like that, we probably wouldn't have had Brexit in the first place. But it's like tentacles, isn't it, of a sort of monster? It's over everything, Absolutely. and you can't.